finish this today. I'll guarantee we're not gonna finish this today. And uh, that's okay. But guys, uh, right up here, 9.2, my title is called Inductive and Deductive Reasoning. Uh, science classes, uh, again, started the last section talking about hypothesis and conclusion and asked you, have you done some of that stuff in science? And you said, yeah, we do that a lot. Now, have your science teachers talked about inductive or deductive reasoning with you at all? How many have heard of inductive or deductive reasoning? How many know the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning? Okay. We'll talk about some examples as we get there, guys. But um, today what we're trying to accomplish is the following. We want to be able to answer this question. How do you use reasoning to solve problems? So again, it's that whole idea, yeah, I've got an answer, but I want you to explain to me why you have the answer. And uh, we've got a short activity we'll look at to try and come up with some uh, solutions to some things today. But I think as we move through this, uh, you'll understand what's going on. Uh, a couple of things we need to be able to do in order to answer our question today. Uh, use inductive reasoning and use deductive reasoning. All right. So let's at, least, uh, let's at least establish a base for vocabulary to know what we're talking about. So first term up here is inductive reasoning. How about a volunteer to read that for me? Okay, reasoning based on patterns or several tests. In science classes, do you guys do labs at all? Yeah. yeah. We're doing one today. Okay, what's that lab about today, Faith? Uh, it's like measuring, like, I don't know. Like measuring stuff? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to uh, expand on that idea at all? Well, I think they're cool. I like them. All right, this day, I wish I was a science teacher. But that said, um, you guys have to do several tests on labs at all? Yeah. Uh, there was a lab that you guys were doing. They showed me some stuff. You guys were talking about, uh, like, uh, meters per second compared to a certain number of seconds or something like that. Did you guys do one that involved velocity and time? Oh, I yeah. hated that. We did that last yeah. year in physical yeah. science. Oh. But you've done those types no, of tests. No, it does so. not show. Well, you don't like them, but you've done those types yeah. of tests, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you have done a lab, and you've done several tests, and you guys came up with a conclusion based on several tests. So what kind of reasoning were you using when you did that? Inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning. Now, guys, uh, as a math guy, I'm kind of a, what I call a deductive reasoner, all right? Deductive reasoning is reasoning based on what? Facts, definitions, accepted properties, and laws of logic. Let me give you an example of deductive reasoning, okay? I love baseball, okay? And I love the Minnesota Twins, all right? Feel sorry for me now if you wish, okay? But um, here's an example of what deductive reasoning is. Some nights when the Twins don't play well, I decide not to stay up and go to bed early, right? So Joe Maurer has my favorite player. Let's just say that I started watching the game and he had, say, 16 home runs before the game even started. I knew that his stats said he had 16 home runs before the game even started. Maybe he was playing Gavin's team, the Astros, who were hot at the time. Houston was winning, okay? I said, no, nah, not watching the rest of this. I'm gonna go to bed. Next morning I wake up, I jump online. I see the Twins made a little comeback, but lost, okay? But in the box store I see that Joe Maurer's home run total is not 16 anymore, but it is now 17. So I make this statement, I said, oh, Maurer hit a home run. Did I make that statement based on a fact or did I make that based on a test? Uh, fact, I read it, it's right there. They put that fact down, he's got 17 home runs. Before the game started, how many did he have? 16. 16, now he has, fact hit, he had a home run. That's a deductive reasoning statement that I can make because I didn't see the home run happen, but I know his total went from 16 to 17. All right, so deductive reasoning is based on what? What's the one key word right here? Facts. Okay. So a lot of the math that we do in here, we do a lot of math based on facts, don't we? Okay. Now don't get me wrong. There is inductive reasoning going on specifically in this chapter. Okay. All right. Last couple of examples uh, or uh, vocab words that I want to get through: uh, counterexample and conjecture. Guys, we talked about counterexample in the last section. We talked about statements being true or false. Okay. In order for statements to be true, they have to be true how many times? Part of the time or all the time? All the time. They have to be true all the time, okay? 
So the idea was that if you can prove something false, give me an example or make a statement false. That's like a counter example. Okay? That's like a counter example. Okay? So listen to what I say here. The product of all numbers is positive. The product of all numbers is positive. That statement true or false? False. False. So give me an example of two numbers that you can multiply together that would not be positive. Negative seven times six. Negative seven times six. That would get you a negative value, right? How about if I said four times zero? Is four times zero positive? Yes. Yeah. Be zero, right? Well, I mean, it's kind of in the medium. But. Neither, neither, neither nor. Okay. All right. So those are counter examples. Start off counting numbers at zero. Those are counter examples. A counter example is any example that proves a statement to be what? You know what? It, it's a counter example is anything that you can do to prove a statement to be what's the word again? False. False. Okay. And then the last thing is conjecture. We're going to make some conjectures about some of the patterns we look at today. A conjecture is simply going to be a rule that you make after observing patterns. Okay. So what I want to do is this. Uh, I want to uh, make a conjecture about this exploration one, and then I'm going to have you guys do an activity here together, and we're going to talk about what's going on there. Okay. So take a look at example one in your notes. Do you guys all have that? Everybody have that there? Okay, guys, right here. It says write a conjecture about the pattern and then use your conjecture to draw the tenth object. Okay, so right here, uh, it says layers in your notes, but in this right here, I've got uh, specifically what type of shape each time, guys? The outline would form a triangle. So here's shape one, shape two, shape three, shape four. All right, give me a show of hands here quickly. Show of hands quickly. Uh, if I would continue the pattern, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's that? What's happening here? Give me a short hand. Don't blurt it out. Just give me a short hand. What's happening with this pattern? Miller, what do you think? It'll go up three, then up four, then up five, then up six, then up seven. So when you say up three, up four, up five, up six, up seven. Dots. So are you like adding? Where are you adding those dots then at? I start with this first one right here. I think if I understand you correctly, this is the first one that had the, this is the first one that had the perimeter, uh, one by one by one here. Are you saying that the first row is one dot, the second row is two dots? So another row down here, you would add three dots. Next one, keep that the same, and then add. Is that what you're saying? So you're adding that number of dots to each row. Okay. Would you guys agree with his argument here? Okay. So yeah, it looks like to me right here, and I agree with you, Gavin, if I understand you correctly, this is the same triangle as shape one up top here, right? So for the next one, they just added three dots below that. To make this third shape, keep the second shape and add how many dots here now? So how many am I going to add here? Five. So to get to the tenth one, think of it this way. Guys, shape one has how many dots on the bottom? Two. One more than the shape number, right? Shape two has... Shape two has how many dots on the bottom? Three. One more than the shape number, right? Shape three, how many dots on the bottom? Four, okay? Now, I'm not going to draw this out, but if we had to go to the shape 10 right here, guys, shape 10, based on this pattern, just like uh, shape four, shape four has how many dots on the bottom? Looks like one, two, three, four, five. It looks like for every shape number, there is one more dot in the bottom row. There's one more dot in the bottom row. There's one more than the shape number in there. So if I'm at shape 10, how many dots are you going to have in that bottom row of your pattern? 11. So you would draw a triangle. You would draw the triangle pattern. It would be the triangle pattern. How many dots on your base? With 11 dots. With 11 dots on the base. Eleven dots on the base of the triangle. Okay, good. So do we guys all identify that pattern right there? Do you see what's happening here? You just keep making the triangle bigger, 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 bigger. We're going to start looking at patterns right here. That's one part of what we're going to be doing today. When I look at several different patterns, test many different patterns, do a lot of experiments with many different patterns, by definition, kids, by definition, am I doing something that's inductive or something that's deductive? Inductive because we're basing it on 
What? What's the word I'm pointing at here? Patterns. patterns. We're looking at patterns. Can you observe a pattern in that? Okay. So that's some sort of inductive reasoning for us. All right. So what we're going to do here, guys, next is this. Uh, before I get into example two, you guys have any questions about exploration one there? Are we cool with what we've got there? Everybody agree? Pretty quiet, and I, I get that, but I think we're all just kind of looking around. I think we all get that pattern right there. Okay. Well, here's what I want to do, guys. We're going to kind of put you to, go to work here. Guys, uh, in example two, you're going to kind of work with a partner. Now, do you guys see all these statements right down here, A through G? Everybody see those statements down there? A through G. This is considered a, a Venn diagram. You guys have used Venn diagrams in the past? Yes? No? Yes? Okay. So I think you know how to read these. And guys, uh, what I'm going to tell you to do right now with your partners is you guys have a pen and a whiteboard in front of you, right? Okay. Uh, on this right here to start, I'm going to give you about a minute or two in your group to go ahead and try and look at this Venn diagram right here. Working with your partner, you're going to use the Venn diagram to determine whether the statement that they give you based on the diagram is true or false. Okay, it says justify your answer. It says assume that no region of the Venn diagram is empty. Okay, no region is empty. So what I want you guys to do is this. On your board, I want you to label A through, what's it go through on the notes, guys? A through G. Okay, and then uh, Mrs. Olson, I'll have to get some of the kids in this conversation with this, okay? Uh, A through G, and... Uh, just go through and tell me true or false. You don't really need to justify. We're going to talk more as a group about justifying. But in your group right now, I want you to go through A through G and uh, just determine true or false right now. Write them down on your board. Okay. So talk with your group. I'll give you about uh, two minutes on this right now. Okay. So go ahead and do that first.
Uh, what I really want to make sure that we check out is that if we disagree on some of the true falseness of, of this, then I want to make sure that we talk about why we're disagreeing. Okay? We do that a lot. I mean, we talk about, hey, try this. If you disagree, talk about why you disagree. So that's what I want to have happen with this right now. Okay? Uh, Gator, let me know when you're done, and uh, we'll get started here, all right? Are you close? Okay. Figure out who's going to be your spokesperson for the group, all right? All right, hey, here we go, guys. Here we go. Looks like everybody's done. So uh, everybody with me right now. Um, Kyle, I'm gonna pick on your group first. Okay. If anybody disagrees with the solution, be ready to talk. Okay. Uh, all right. So in this Venn diagram, you have property A. Um, guys, inside of property A is what? So the the idea here is that if you would be anywhere in property uh, B, you would also be in property A as well, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Let me ask this question. If you're in property B, is property B ever in property C? No. Is property A in property C? Yes. Sometimes, right? This part where it overlaps right in here? You bet, sometimes. So let's talk about some of these statements. Uh, we're going to do a couple things. With, I, I really agree that, uh, or I, I really think that you, a lot of you are going to agree on, on what it is that we uh, have for solutions here. And, and um, um, that's okay. But we're going to do something differently with the ones that are false here in a second. Okay, uh, Kyle, your group. If an item has property B, then it has property A. Or in other words, if you're in property B, are you in property A? What'd True. you say? True. Okay. Anybody disagree with uh, that? Anybody disagree with that? Okay. Basically, it's saying if you're in property B, you're also in property A. Would you guys agree? All right. Um, let's see. Chelsea, somebody in your group. No, uh, letter B. If an item has property A then it must have property B. You put true? Okay. Anybody put false for that? Gavin, your group put false? Yeah. Okay. Chelsea, in your group, you want to argue for true? <laughs> I'll argue for you. true. You're saying true? Yes. Why? Well, because... So you're saying that if I pick a point in property A, that it must be in property B? Yes. That would be a point that's in property B and property A at the same time, right? Yes. How about this one, right? How about this point right here? That point right there. Is that point in property A underneath yes. the question mark? No. Is that point in property A? Is yes. it in property yes. It is, but is it in property B? No. Okay. Are you saying this statement is true all the time or some of the time? Some of the time. Some of the time. Now remember what we talked about in the last section. We said in order for a statement to be true, it must be true how many times, guys? All the time. All the time. So what are we forced to answer here? False. False. We've got to go false, all right? So Gavin, uh, clarify false for me. You guys had false. Gavin, clarify false for me. Uh, clarify your false then. I kind of summed it up, but you, you sum it up for me. Why are we going false there? It could be outside of B, but but still in. Very good. All right. So do we all agree false there? We all agree false? All right. Part C. Part C. Uh, let's see. Jacob, this will be your group. If an item has property A, then it has property C. And again, like we said, we've got to assume if stuff's going to be true, it's got to be true all the time. And if something's not true, we need to find a counterexample that would... Um, contradict that statement. Okay, Jacob, true or false on C? False. You guys went false, okay? So again, 
an item that has property A over here in the big property A must have property C. Could it be true sometimes? Describe to me where that area would be sometimes. Where they overlap. Excellent description. So that's right here, right? Okay. Well, how about a point right here? It says if, a, if an item has property A, then it must have property C. If I pick this point again, does that have property A? Does that have property A right there, guys? It does, but does that have property C? No. no. So we found a counterexample. That must be false. Okay, very good. Uh, letter D. Let me clean some of this up here quickly, guys. Okay. Uh, letter uh, D. Uh, this one will be for your group, Mary. Mary says some items have property A. Now listen to the wording. Some items that have property A do not have property B. Some of the items that have property A do not have property B. True. Okay. Doesn't say all of the items that have property A. It says some. Here's some points that have property A but not property B. Would you guys agree with that? So that statement is what? True. Very good. True. Anyone disagree with true? All right. Uh, letter E here. Letter E. Uh, Gator, your group. If an item has property C, then it does not have property B. If an item has property C, then it does not have property B. True. So if I'm anywhere in property C up here, could you ever be in property B? Everybody agree true on that one? Okay. So if an item has property C, then it does not have property B. True. Excellent. Uh, I need a group to volunteer for the letter F. Letter F say some items, some items have both properties A and C. Not all items, but what? Some, some items. Kyle, help me. True. True. What if I would have said all items that have property a have property C. Then it, would be false. then it would be false. So this idea of some and all, some and all, that's very important to us. Yeah, you bet some items that have property A have property C. And again, Jacob described it best. It's that uh, part where the diagrams do what? What was the word you used, Jacob? Overlap. Very good. So true. Anybody disagree true on letter F? Last one, letter G. Some items both, uh, or I'm sorry, some items have both properties B and C. What'd you say there? False. False. Some items have property B and C. B and C don't mix, do they? Okay. All right, so are, are we in agreement on the true-false part of this? Okay. Now, here's where I'm going to take a turn here for you. All right? Use your board. Uh, maybe go to the other side of it or clean it up here. I'll, I'll, I'll throw an eraser and some towels out at you so you can clean those up quickly. I want you to look at the ones that are false. So get the true false written down on your notes. You can share some towels. Wipe that up. Or if you have room, maybe just put it off to the side. This one here is not going to go around. All right. Uh, okay. So how many statements were false up here, kiddos? Two statements were false. No, actually. So B was false. C was false. And letter G was false, right? Okay, here's what we're going to do. How many groups do I have total? One, two, three, four, five, perfect, six. Okay, you two right here, this group, parents group, and Brit's group, you guys are going to work with letter B, okay? Letter B is what kind of a statement? False. It's false, okay? On your whiteboard, I want you guys to come up with a new Venn diagram so that that statement becomes true. So I want you to draw a new Venn diagram that makes that statement true. Forget what's up there now, but you have to have a property A, a property B, and a property C. I want you to draw some type of Venn diagram that would make that true. Like the B that has Okay, so that B that's up there that I highlighted in red, the statement, if an item has property A, then it has property B. Uh, it says if an item has property A, then it has property B. I want you to redraw really a diagram that would make that statement true, not some of the time, but all of the time. And you don't have to copy it up there like that. I just want you to draw it so that I can say true to that all the time. Does that make sense? Talk it over, talk with them. They're doing the same thing, okay? Uh, Kenzie, Mary, your group right here. Uh, letter C. 
I want you to redraw a Venn diagram that says if an item has property A, then it must have property C. Okay, so you've got to draw it so that if you have a property A, then it must have a property C as well. I don't care what it looks like. Okay, but make that statement true when you're redrawing. Uh, Jacob, Andrew, you guys have which one? Last one? Uh, letter G. So up there, some items have both properties B and C. Some items have both properties B and C. I want to draw some kind of diagram that would make that statement true. Involving property B and C. Okay. You guys got it? Okay, go. So go ahead and erase that. Hey, where's that towel at? Where's the towel? Clean that up. Hang on a second. Uh, read the statement for me first. Yep, you got it. What's the statement say that was false? Uh, if an item has property A, then it has property B. So if an item has A, it has a property. Then it has. Then it has B. All right. Um, I'll go by even or odd right now. Uh, Taryn, I'll figure out which group is going to put theirs up there. Uh, even or odd behind my back. It's even. So do you guys want to draw it or do you want them to draw it? I'll draw it. You guys draw it up there. Who wants to draw it? We'll draw it. We'll draw it. Okay, no. Do we actually want to draw it? Yeah, you can. So you need to draw something that says, you need to make this a true statement now. So I want you to recreate this. It says, if you have item A, then you also have item B. So show me what you have there. And then you guys check the diagram out and see if you agree. So there's area C or property C, if you will. Property B, property A. Okay, check it out, guys. If you are in A, are you in B? Yes. Have they provided a Venn diagram that would make that statement true now? Yeah. Very good. Perfect. All right. Um, excellent. Did uh, other group that did that was that something that you had similar to that? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. What was the second one that was false? C. C was. C was false. Who are my C people? Faith or McKenna? You guys want to draw yours at all? Mm -hmm. Who wants to draw ours? I don't care who draws. Yeah, I don't care either. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Somebody tell me what the statement was first. What was the statement that was false originally? If an item has property A, then it has property B. So if we have A, then has what? Property C. Okay, uh, who wants to draw this one? Somebody come up and draw it. Taylor, you want to draw this one? Faith, you want to draw it for me? Kinsey? All right. I'm sorry. You're not going to beat me up now, are you? Hey, Kinsey, Kinsey, Kinsey. So we've got to redraw this diagram that says if it has A, then it has C. Okay, 
agree with that. If you would jump into property A, are you already in property C then? So no matter where you are at in property A, you are also where? Property C. Do you guys agree with the reasoning there? So that would be a diagram that would make letter C, what kind of a statement then? True. Okay, last one here. What was the last one that was false? G. G? Somebody run that statement by me, please. Some items have both property G and C. Some items have... It doesn't say all, so some items have, what was it, B and C? Yeah. Okay, so the groups that were uh, letter G, Carson and Jacob, who have volunteered, want to draw us? Want it, Carson? Okay, you guys check this drawing out, see if you agree or disagree. We kind of had two ways to do it. What about this? Okay, you guys check it out up here, see if you guys agree with this last one. Kind of like the first groups where we switched A and B. Okay, look at that right there, guys. If I read the statement now, some items have B and C. Uh, do you agree? Yes. Show me the section where B and C exist together. Some of the items B and C exist together. So it's the overlapping of the two diagrams or the two bigger ovals, right? Yeah. You said you had an alternative to this? Kind of. Let's see. It's, it. it's like where there's C. And then there's B, and there's A. Oh, I like so that. they kind of all. So in that one right there, you could also say some items have A and C. You could say, why is there an item? Nope. That's interesting. I could really expound on that. I'm not going. I don't want to confuse you today, but uh, I agree with those. How many of you guys agree with what they have up there? Me. Okay. Understand how to read those diagrams. Yes. Okay. Um, excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think I'm going to stop there today, and then we'll look at some of the examples tomorrow. So